and welcome to Triangle B and I. Today's show is brought to you by Oak City Tech. Oak City Tech gives their clients an edge over their competition with web and logo design that make them stand out. They increase brand awareness, generate leads with SEO and social media presence, and then convert those leads into clients with content creation and email marketing. If you will go to oakcitytech.com, send them a note, they will call you back. Uh, tell Drago we said hi. Hi, everybody. My name is Mike Manning, and each week we bring you a small business success story from Triangle BNI. If you are not familiar with BNI, it is Business Networking International, the world's largest networking organization. Our little slice of heaven here in the Triangle is Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. Every week, 32 chapters and almost 580 members get together to help each other grow our small businesses. So if you or someone you know is looking to start a small business or grow a small business, please go to trianglebni.com, click on the button in the upper right-hand corner, says find a chapter, see what works for you, and come on out and visit. Our small business success story today is Mitchell Smith, the owner of Promethean, and they are a expert in payment company. I love little things I get on the websites on what you do. We're going to dig into that. Mitchell, glad to have you here today. Uh, thanks for having me, Mike. All right, so Mitchell is in RD39. You guys meet Friday mornings at the Wake Forest Coffee Coffee Company on the second floor. I'm assuming you're a morning person, right? 8 a.m.? Yeah, got to be uh, meeting and networking <laughs> when uh, can't be mean with businesses. Absolutely. I, I'm with you. My mom, as we get older and you look at, I don't know if you've taken stock. Do you have brothers and sisters? Yes, okay. five of them. Okay, so we'll get into that too. Uh, if you take stock of the gene pool you get from your parents. And you look at, like my dad, great spatial relations. When we would go anywhere growing up, he'd say, okay, everybody take your suitcases out to the car and just come back inside. And there'll be 82 things to pack. And we'll go inside and five minutes later, he'll come back in the trunk. is just perfectly packed. Uh -huh. Nothing where it shouldn't be, nothing in the backseat of the car. It's all in the trunk. And he never passed on that gene to me. But my mom passed on the let's get up early and get things done gene. So um, I'm a morning person with you. So how did you find this chapter? Let's see. And how many others did you visit? I visited quite a few, actually. I uh, searched around looking for chapters because I had been in BNI in the D.C. area where I had started my business. And so I knew the importance of the quality of the members and having the right assortment of people, people that get things done. And so I had actually visited quite a few. And then I saw that... Uh, a different Mike, Mike Davis. Yes, he was, friend of the show. He was on a couple weeks ago. Yep. That chapter. Yep. And I had by happenstance met him uh, a while previous. Our, our kids were at the the same farm <laughs> uh, place. I, I can't even remember the name of it now, but we, we were there and we just got talking. And so yep. I saw that he was in there. And so I called him yep. up. Hey, tell me about your group, why you're in there. I visited that one, and that one ended up being a really good. Friend. Oh yeah, yeah, Love good the members. Yeah, Mike's good dude, good storyteller. He's got plenty. Promethean, you guys, if we if we simplify it for people, you guys do credit card processing. Yep. Okay. Now, that in a nut in on its own to people in the business world. Okay, we kind of get that. But if you're not in the business world, consumers really never see you very much, do they? No, we're we're a lot of times behind the scenes, and the only time people uh, usually hear about the industry is when Home Depot or somebody screws up, and, uh, <laughs> and you know everybody hack, yeah. gets breached, everybody's yeah. lost a whole bunch of money, yeah. cards are reissued. That's the only time my industry ever gets any sort of attention. So there are a hundred things you guys do with businesses behind the scenes because mm -hmm. we think of oh, I come up to the cash register. They ring up my order. I hand them my credit card. Either I put in the chip or they take it and swipe it. Uh, but there's way more to that. I know you guys, and we talked a second ago about experts and payments, but loyalty rewards cards, right? Hardware, wiring and everything. You guys are knee deep in all of this. Yes. Who Who's an ultimate client for you guys? Uh, you know, we, we do a wide variety of different clientele. Uh, anything from service companies to restaurants. And, and I guess if we were to put in the top three orders, it would probably be uh, first restaurants, second service companies, and then third medical. Yep. So as far as just percentage of client base. Cool. We were talking earlier with Amnon before the show about names of companies, and some are easy, some are not. Uh -huh. uh, Promethean, I know there's a good story there, right? 
Yes. All right, so uh, what's the story on the name? So I, I'm a big nerd. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and, and I loved uh, mythology growing up. And so if anybody's familiar with Prometheus, it's the titan that brought fire and industry to mankind and was the one that took them to being basically savages and took them to fire age being able to make tools and weapons and, and being able to build great kingdoms. And actually Prometheus was punished for bringing it to mankind and was tortured for time and all <laughs> eternity from the gods from turning their nice little worshipers that just had rocks and stones to being somebody that could be smart enough to challenge them one day. Always a good and pot so, stirrer in there. <laughs> yes. And so, uh, yes, same sort of way. I like to stir things up. I like to mess with the status quo and like to feel like I'm bringing that same sort of attitude and environment to businesses. How did you get all this started? Accident. Uh, good. I pl- like that. Plain and simple. Uh, I had actually started it, my career in the insurance industry, mm-hmm. uh, selling insurance. Yep. Failed miserably. Good. And, uh, I love those stories that lead to other stuff because some people think you fail once and you're done. Oh, not even close. So not even close. So yeah, I this was back in Utah and my wife's actually from right outside of the Washington, DC area. So after I lost my job, we moved closer to being near her family. And I wanted to look for something safe, you know. Just <laughs> gone from commission yeah. sales. And so I, I started looking around. I, I strong financial background. So, Hey, let me look for a job as a banker or or something like that. So started looking. Nah. And and so as time went on, I got desperate. And so I found a job with the company selling merchant services. And as time went on, I found that that clicked. I love working with business owners that, that to me was just so much more appealing working Mm -hmm. with people that create things than, you know, meeting with mom and dad at eight o'clock at night to talk about life insurance. It it clicked (laughs) and I enjoyed it and I enjoyed working with businesses. So after being with that company for a number of years and moving up in the ranks, the field trainer to the director of sales, uh, it was time to go and do it myself. And was it a first cold call or first actual deal you, that you were part of that kind of triggered all this? uh, The, like the first time selling with that company. Yeah. Or did just the knowledge come easy of the product? It, it actually is quite complicated. It took a while to learn. It takes quite a few months to master. So I actually took longer to master than probably insurance. But yeah, I remember I, I, one of my first clients I do remember was a Mexican restaurant uh, <laughs> in, uh, in that area. Great Mexican food. Lacho Cita Grill. Check them out if you're up, uh, <laughs> up out there in Leesburg. But I remember sitting down with a business owner and taking a look at his statements and what he was doing and the amount of money I was able to save him. And then not just that, but being able to implement a system where he is able to sell gift cards and reward his customer. And this was years ago. So technology wasn't great. It was a little terminal, oh, uh, yeah. you know, li- you know, plastic gift cards, plastic loyalty cards, but it made a huge difference for his business. Just that little package and the money I saved him gave him a whole lot more revenue. And I remember thinking, this is a lot more fun. Making businesses more money, making them more profitable, putting better processes in place. This is a lot more fun. And, (laughs) and, and yes, from there it was, I was hooked. Was this a cold call that got you in front of him? This was actually a call center appointment, if okay. I remember. Right. Right. So right. that was nice enough to not have to cold call, but I've done my fair share of that. So this would have been 2000 and what? When did I start with that? 2011, okay. 2012. Right. How much was he paying? It's like a god awful percentage. Uh, I don't remember the total amount. I remember I was saving him like 300 bucks a month, which Dang. for a small little oh, sure. Mexican restaurant is quite a bit. Oh, yeah. For some of my clients, that wouldn't mean much. But for him, yeah. it, it, you know, it's, it freed up a whole lot of money to do other things he needed to for the business. In the one of the, and I talk about this all the time on the show and in B&I as well. Matt Yablonowski with Retained Revenue is one of the, I think he's like one of the first five or six guests we had on the show. But what I'm learning from him is what I've come to appreciate in B&I is that local contact. Mm -hmm. So they have Mitchell Smith's cell phone number. So if anything happens, 
they can call you versus the 1 800 numbers. They got to punch in 16 digits. They get somebody in Topeka, Kansas, could care less about your business in Cary. Uh -huh. So I love that part about it where you can knock on somebody's door and go, I'm local. I'm right here. I'm a small business owner. I'm local. And I know that makes a lot of people happy because they truly want to deal with local people, don't they? Yes. Yeah, it definitely makes a big difference when you have a contact in this industry. Most people are used to calling a 1-800 yeah. number, being put on hold for 30 minutes. So, yeah, having somebody that can streamline the process, uh, somebody local, and somebody who a lot of times doesn't even need to go through the process of calling people or emailing people to be able to fix the problem. That's the nice thing about having enough industry knowledge is you can fix a lot of the things yourself and uh, streamline the process of customer service for sure. And what a lot of us offer, what most small businesses, no matter what city you're living in, offer, usually versus the, the big box stores and the corporate logos and everything, we can usually do a better price. But what I've found is the customer service end is just blows them away mm -hmm. because we're local and they can call. And I know that's probably one use of deals, right? Yes. Uh, being able to uh, service the client better. Um, but also surprisingly, I find that a lot of times even the big competitors don't do a great job at making sure that all their different services and software talk to each other. Even the big ones, you know, really, everybody uses QuickBooks. Everybody <laughs> yeah. has a website. Everybody has email. And so being able to put in place solutions where everything talks to each other, their payment piece to QuickBooks, uh, that's been a huge, huge reason that a lot of people do business with us is we actually take the time to learn enough about their business to make our suggestions of what product and service should be there work with everything else and not just say, hey, we got the greatest stuff here. We're going to sell it to you and then you can deal with it and make sure it works with your own business. I don't enjoy doing broad brush strokes, but when it comes to national companies versus local small business owners, again, whatever city you're in, for the national companies, a lot of it we hear all the time, oh, it's just a numbers game. And a lot of times it is. But with small business owners, this is our life. If I bring you on as a client, I really, really like to keep you because <laughs> uh -huh. you want to develop a relationship. But I, you know, and we've all gotten great advice from bosses in previous years. And one of my bosses said, hey, it's a whole lot e easier and cheaper to keep a client. And I know you found that as well, right? Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's always so much better to just keep your yeah. customers happy than to go out and look for more. That doesn't mean you should ever, ever stop looking for oh, more. Oh, no, clients, no, not at all. Ever. And, and that should always be one of your number one priorities because mm -hmm. you can only retain a customer if you got them in the first <laughs> place. But you're right. Yeah. It's a lot less expensive to keep one. Than and you probably one. are a customer of some of your customers, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, I, uh, and that, again, strengthens that relationship, doesn't it? Yeah. I actually just got a client just a couple weeks ago by going and doing business with them. <laughs> they saw me there. We got talking. And then they say, hey, I want to do business with you because it it matters to businesses. It if, does. If you can ever do business with yep. the people you want to do business with, mm -hmm. it's not always possible. Like if you work with car dealerships, you can't be buying a new car every week uh, <laughs> to get their business. But yep. it, if, if it's a restaurant, uh, it's, you know, HVAC company, you know, landscaper, mm -hmm. you know, if it's somebody that it makes yep. sense and it would actually help you to do business oh, yeah. with them, do it. Yep. If you say, buy local and you're not buying local, you know, <laughs> sell your product. But I shop at Walmart each week and yeah. I eat at big box chains. That that gives you a lack of credibility. Yeah. Shop local. Nah, if you believe you. in, in uh, them doing business with you. Uh, let your actions follow your words, uh, which is another, I was listening to a podcast the other day about social media these days and people will rant about something. You think they're all cool and everything. Like, well, I'm never buying tickets to that fill in the blank again. And then like a month later, they bought tickets. Yeah. Like that. But, but I'm with you on the small business life is walking the walk. Um, if you want to build a client base and a client relationship to be a customer of theirs and relationships, referrals are relationships or come from relationships. And we know that I think we could all, most small business owners could tell you that the stronger you develop that relationship, the better they're going to, the longer you have to the opportunities you have to keep them as a client. 
I so agree. let's go back to the transition from because small business ownership's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. As a business coach, <laughs> we come across people like, yeah, I don't think you're quite ready yet. Because uh, it's hard. You got to go all in on yourself and you got to want that lifestyle. So, what was that transition like when you first started thinking about, you know what, sweetie? Let's get the kids to bed. We got to talk. I really, really want to do this. So, how did how did that phase go? Very painfully. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I'm glad I had the arrogance to think I could do it and go knock it out of the but ballpark you right to. away. You but, have to. But you're right. You do have to. You got to do some uh, homework. But you got to have that arrogance about yourselves. Like, you know what? I can do this. Yeah. So I thought, hey, I've got the contacts. I've been in this mm-hmm. industry. You know, I can replace my income in less than a year. And uh, <laughs> so I'm going to take out this little bank loan and mm-hmm. I'm going to just have at it. And I'm going to take the world on. Oh, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't always end up that mm-hmm. way. Um, nope, it does not. So I'm a big believer now. I wish I'd read the book before, but in what's called the 10X rule. Yes. Are you familiar with that, yeah. Grant no, Cardone? No. So it takes about 10 times as much effort as you think you'll oh, big have time, to. Yeah. And, and I found that out the hard way. Now, thankfully, I did get my act together, which is why I'm still in business. But <laughs> it did take uh, quite a bit more work to get to where yeah. I wanted to. And uh, it took a lot more sacrifice. But, uh, oh, man, am I happy that I am where I'm now. So. You have those days where you land that first client or you get two in a week. You're like, you know what? I got this. Yep. I am so built for this. And then the next three weeks you get nothing. Yep. Nobody will return your phone calls. Every business you walk in, we're good or, or they tell something else. And then, but you, you're going to go through that. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you enjoy being a small business owner and you're okay betting on yourself, you know what you're doing. It's a wonderful life, yeah. but it's not for everybody. is it? No, it's not. <laughs> All right, you have wife and four kids. Yes. All right. So one of my favorite questions on the show is I always ask people, how did you meet your spouse? And you both tell the story the same way. <laughs> uh, so I met my wonderful wife, Julie, in uh, actually a group home for troubled youth. Uh, my wife, it was a psychology major, and I was a social work major, actually, to begin with. So, uh, didn't, credit card company. right. So natural quite a transition, few changes, right? <laughs> natural transitions, but, uh, we'd work together, uh, but at different homes. And actually we had our, a boss of ours say, Hey, you two should go on a date with each other. And was uh, this at school? Uh, we were going to school at the time, but this was a, a group home where we worked at in Utah. Okay. Gotcha. Right. So troubled youth, kids that had really okay. screwed up their lives. Um, oh man. So we were both awesome leads. Stuff, at, yep myself at the boys home her at the girls home mm. and we went on a date with each other i finally got up the, the courage to <laughs> go with the advice and ask her out and a very simple first date we went bowling all right and uh we we had a lot of fun at the date but we decided to make it a bit interesting we had decided whoever lost this next game which i i thought i'd i had it in the bag <laughs> the other person would get to take them to what was called Deseret Industries over there. It it would be the equivalent to, say, a Salvation Army or, you know, really low-end thrift store. Okay. And that person would have to dress in whatever we picked for the person. Nice. Okay. And so (laughs) I ended up losing. (laughs) And so, but I still won because it it made us go on another date with each other. It did. It did. And, uh... She she did a pretty good job dressing me in some pretty embarrassing clothing. So I had these blinged out camouflage slippers. I had, uh, it wasn't even Christmas time, and I had a big old shirt with a reindeer on it that said, my roof or yours. <laughs> big tall beanie hat, a little kid's backpack, <laughs> and, and, nice and some old school gym shorts, and and. And to follow up with that, we had to go out in public, dress like that with the other person. So that was the next step to the bed. And so we went to the mall with me dressed up like this. But here's here's the bad thing about me is I knew how to turn this around to make it a lot more embarrassing (laughs) to her. So I'm dressed like this. So I act like I have special needs the rest of the time. My poor... (laughs) <laughs> then, you know, yeah. just friend, but I, you know, I was, I was yelling at the top of my lungs, Auntie Jules, 
Auntie Jules, let's go to build a bell workshop. Let's go, you know, yeah. and, and people are looking and saying, oh, how sweet. And she, I've got her by the arm and she she thinks she's got, you know, because the way I'm dressed yeah. as an adult, no well, regular adult Well, and you're taller than average like as well, so that just added so, to it. Right? So I'm, I'm looking like Green Mile, dude, like dressed up all funky going through this place. But, you know, she played along and we, that's, okay. that's why I knew she's the one for me is, uh, <laughs> you know, she, she rolled with it. We had a blast, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, we were inseparable from Dude, then on out. That's a wonderful bet. I've not heard that usually. Now it's good for, for the guy speaking for guys. It's good for us. If we can make a bet that guarantees a second date, if we really, really want to go out with a girl. So, uh, kudos to you for that. But who came up with the idea, first of all, of the bet and then the consequence? So the bet and the consequence were my idea. <laughs> she might disagree with me, yeah, but yeah, if yeah. my memory serves right, Next I time was I see her, came I'll with it. Yeah, but, uh, so, yeah, I, I came up with the idea. Okay. And, uh, you know, Too we had funny. some fun. You know, it was just to make the, the bowling a little bit more oh, exciting. Yeah. But uh, Tell me you didn't lose with a 112. You lost with a 172. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Might have not broken 100 that game. It was a pretty bad game <laughs> where she won. So. Uh, uh, so that was, and you knew going through the mall, she could put up with this, right? Oh, she's yeah. a keeper. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, we just had so much fun. And uh, she's always been a good match for me. How long after that were you engaged and, more, and, uh, and then married? That's a good question. We got engaged pretty fast. It was probably about three months after that. We were engaged for a while before we got yeah. married, but okay. it was pretty soon after that Too that we, we knew. So, now, who's the boss that introduced you to? Was this both your bosses? Yeah. Okay. And how was it a he or a she? She. Tanya. How did she describe Julie, Julie to you? Uh, just, it was actually not a great description. Just, <laughs> you know, hey, there's this really cute girl yeah, and right. she's a great. I think you guys would be good with each other. Yeah. And I, I'd met her briefly, so I already knew. I oh, thought okay. she was attractive. Okay, right. um, so didn't have to tug on me too hard to, to yeah, go on a date. So but. then the follow-up question for me, if Julie were here, is, okay, all right, nobody's listening, just us here. Uh -huh. <laughs> How long did you have to be convinced to go out with him? And do you think she remembered meeting you or did you just see her? She, she did. Okay. She does remember. And okay. she describes our meeting a little bit differently than I do. <laughs> She's like, oh, you're smitten from me from the get go. Yeah. And I was like, you were so nervous around me. I don't remember it being that way. I just remember thinking she was cute and talking to her for a second. Nice. But apparently I was super nervous like, if she were to tell the story. Well, how did she get to Utah from DC, from the DC area? She ended up going to school out there. Okay. She also had a few family members okay. out there. Right. But okay. yeah, it was school that brought her. So, right, so we go from the mall date to four kids now. Uh -huh. What are the age ranges? Six, four, two, newborn. Oh, Mitch. <laughs> Dude, boys Woo! or girls? Uh, two boys, two girls. Who are the old? What's the pecking order? Two girls are at the oldest, two boys at the top. Like, yeah, I'm not sure we could have planned it better if we the, wanted to. And how old is the, is the newborn? Uh, he's nine months now. Okay. He... You have you have sisters, yes. Okay, who? Where are you in the pecking order? I'm, I'm the very oldest of six. Oh, okay, kids. well, this won't apply to you then. Your youngest son. Oh, those girls are going to dress him up in stuff. And yes. Try out new things with him. Yeah, yeah. So, have they gotten around to wanting to paint your fingernails and toenails yet? I haven't let them go that far. You'll do that. I'll, I'll play. I'll play house. I'll sit down with yeah. the girls and I'll I'll tell them stories and I'll I'll do the princess and the magic kingdom thing. They're, they're not touching the nails. Yeah, they are. So. One day, one of them is going to come up, Daddy, yeah. can I paint? You're going to have to do it. And I have two boys. Uh -huh. If I had a girl, I would have let her do that. I've got four nieces, and they did that to their dads. Uh -huh. And it's a badge of honor when you go out in public, and other dads with daughters see that. Because there could be some dads like, nah, I would never do that. And you walk in <laughs> and go, hey, people, I'm the coolest dad ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, what does Julie do? She is CEO of our household. Okay. Um, uh, the hardest job there is. Yes. Raising so kids. Yep. Her background, she has her degree in psychology, and she's actually a classically trained singer. And she's really? actually, now that, because I think we're done having kids, but she's going to get back into it and, and performing and Ooh. lovely voice. What kind of music? Uh, classical. So okay. she, she can do opera. She can do oh, Broadway. Wow. She can... Uh, 
She can belt it out. When did you know in the relationship she could sing? It took a while because, you know, that's not really something mm-hmm. that, that comes up. But yeah. uh able to see her perform a few times. Oh, really? And, uh, oh, nice. She's, okay. yeah, lovely voice. Oh, it's great for the great. kids to sing them to sleep and lullabies and stuff. Yeah, she's a very good pianist as uh, well, so she can play piano and are sing. Are you allowed to sing with her to the kids? No. <laughs> um, it's, it's funny. She has this list of things. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe yeah. all women do this, but they have a list of. She had a list of things she wanted her husband to have, and I know, and yeah. and she's like, "You checked off almost every single one except this one," and and she wanted somebody that was musically talented and trained, which I am just not. I I have an awful singing <clears throat> voice. I I can barely play piano. Played a little bit of clarinet growing up, but no musical talents to speak of. My wife wanted somebody who could dance she loves going out Mm -hmm. and she loves dancing she's a really good dancer and we're laughing as we got to know each other and obviously the relationship went you know down the road we ended up before we got married we're kind of somehow that came up in conversation one night and we're going somehow we got on the list she goes well at the top of my list was i wanted to i wanted to marry somebody that could dance and which again further confirms my point that the heart wants what the heart wants because I can't dance a lick. I just will go to parties and stuff like that, and I'll tell everybody, just, you know, I'll tell her, just go dance. I'm good right over here. I'll hang here. I'll slow dance with you. But, man, if there's any rhythm that needs to be had, I ain't it. Yeah. Ain't it. So, yeah, it's funny that it comes to that. But do you have the musical talent, anything there? Oh, or? none. Oh, Absolutely okay. none. And thankfully, our boys got dancing gene from their mother. Because they can both dance. No, and that's and that's fun. And yeah, that's something I wish I'd get a little bit more back into. Because that's something you can do your whole life. So, no, it, so, some things like the sports I played. Well, that's different. I, yeah. Sport talent I have. I can't find the beat uh, to dance to it. And we'll be driving down the road sometimes, and uh, and there'll be a song on the radio, and she'll say, "Okay, tap my knee to the beat." And I'm good for like nine seconds. <laughs> I get off beat real fast. And she starts laughing. So it's funny when when we write things down. It's like, here's what I'm looking for in a perfect world. It's so easy back then. They uh-huh. do this, this, this. So, but I, I like that. The fact Because, again, the heart wants what the heart wants when yeah. the heart beats the person. So I'm a firm believer in that. So uh, so four kids. Uh, where do each other's parents, where do the grandparents live? Uh, the grandparents, one sets in... Virginia and the other sets in Utah. Okay. So the ones in Virginia are her folks. Yes. Are there other grandkids in the mix or your four are the only four? No, both of us came from six children. <laughs> so uh, she's the youngest six. I was the oldest of six. And so uh, there's <laughs> quite a bit of grandchildren on. Both well, how sides. big was the wedding? Just family. <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't go too far outside of family. And there's, there's still a decent oh, yeah. crowd at both receptions, the one in Utah and the one in Virginia. Now, so. when you go to reunions for her side of the family, are you nine out of ten with faces, four out of ten with names? Oh, man. Or how do you – because my wife comes from a big family, big Texas family, and it's it's like I – remember. I'm seeing a lot of them, but when we started dating, we were going to these because we were living in Texas. Um, I'd go visit. I could start remember. Oh yeah, that's right. He's with her, and they've got two. You know, but names not now. Yeah, names not names happening. are still pretty tough. I I, <laughs> I I I fortunately really like her family, so Good, I, I I I get along with them. I I I stay in touch with a lot of okay. them, but there's enough that I I don't know them all <laughs> as you. as you. And when you get the family yourself. Christmas cards, does she have to remind you who they are? We because you see the picture uh-huh. on the cover is like I really. I know them. I know their family, but I don't know where they are. The, she does. Because then you have to put them in the pecking order side of the family. No, no, they're the ones that live in Georgia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no question. <laughs> what do your kids call the grandparents? So the ones in Virginia are Gigi and Papa. Nice. And the ones in Utah are just Grandma and Grandpa. Okay, and those are your folks. Yes, okay. those are my folks. How many grandparents, do you, grandkids do your folks have? Mm, let's see. I think they're up to 10 now Nice in total. So six see, others besides our four. Yeah, I got one, and he's a ton of fun. So I used to imagine six or eight are way better. How old's yours now? 
19 months. I'm just cool. there this Saturday, and uh, we're uh, we're learning a lot of new things. So, so he's getting to a point where he can thump around with Grandpa. A oh, yeah. Bit. He comes yeah. grab. I was telling Amnon, he comes to grab my hand. He goes, bye bye. Because he can't say, let's go in the other room and play basketball. So he says, bye bye. He grabs my hand. And we walk in the other room. And <laughs> that's oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. We'll push him down the tracks in his, in his car and play basketball. He'll throw anything through the basketball hoop. So, mm -hmm. but that's fun. So I can imagine with your folks with, yeah eight or 10 or nine or how many they have is cool. So, yeah. All right. So you, who says you're done with kids? You or Julie? That's kind of been both of okay, us. Okay, good. Cause <laughs> I say that to give you some hope that you have a say so in this. Cause you don't. Yeah. You don't. It's, it's her body. If she's done, she's done. Yeah. 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 Four. Yeah. We, we did it right. The okay. First time. Even two number two, table for kids. six, please. Yes. Minivans fit six. You're good. So, right. <laughs> you know, not that, yeah. you know, wouldn't it probably be fun to have more, but yeah, it's it's enough and then everybody can pair off right. with each other right yeah. <laughs> all right so what i'm sounding like is people need to call you you need some more business pay for some diapers and stuff yeah right? formula you know, spit rag yeah get uh yeah. get the get the more clients in help pay for the college uh, we, had a, we have a family friend sports. of ours uh he and his wife just had a baby like six or seven months ago and we saw him I forget when we saw them last but i said all right here's my advice to you if anybody ever says Hey, what, what do you need? Just diapers, diapers, give them the size, just diapers mm -hmm. and spit up rags. You can take care of everything else, but just keep sending diapers. Cause diapers are expensive. You, man. For those of you, for people who don't have kids, you don't realize you're going to go through 10 a day. Mm -hmm. Just do the math. Okay. They come in a bag of 60. You know, that's, I can't even go a whole week on that. Bag, right. so, and they're not cheap. So no, uh, but four not. kids and a wife and five siblings. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, I like that. We are here with Mitchell Smith, owner of Promethean. Mitch is in RD39, which meets Friday mornings at 8 a.m. at the Wake Forest Coffee Company. If you're in the area, please stop by. A rather entertaining group. Mitchell, it, today's show is brought to you by Oak City Tech, where they help you reach your goals with proven technologies for increasing traffic leads and sales. Go to oakcitytech.com, uh, send them a note, tell Drago we said hi. All right, so we've referenced the state of Utah. So now we need to get in your collegiate, your epic collegiate career. You went to the University of Utah. Yes. How did you get, why did you decide on going to Utah? Because I had this funny idea in my head that I was going to become a doctor. Okay. And it had, has one of the top medical programs in okay. the U.S. All right. Uh, so that funny idea was kicked out of me pretty fast after actually going and taking the courses I needed. Was to. it the blood or the Switch math that you or the science that you needed? Uh, science do. kicked my yeah, butt pretty badly. Yeah. Um, I thought I had a good <laughs> grasp on science and no, the few intro biology courses let me know that I, I, I didn't enjoy it and I didn't want to go through 10 more years of that. So. Oh, there are some ro some majors you can kind of you can get down the road with and kind of branch off a little bit to something else. Medicine, you're either all in or you're all out because yeah. that's a lot of time you can't get back. Yeah, so I have a great amount of respect for doctors and what they've <laughs> gone through because no, uh, ADD wasn't letting me do that. <laughs> Did the family? Is there a family tie to the University of Utah? No, actually, my mom did end up going there afterwards and graduated okay um but i i picked it because of what i wanted to to do for a living and now so what reaction <laughs> did your parents have to that medicine the fact that i wanted to go in in the first place or the fact that i dropped out of it or both <laughs> um they're probably less surprised that you dropped out right <laughs> sure. if you had nothing that said i want to be a doctor growing up i know all the sciences yeah. i could do that and they they encouraged me quite a bit actually, well good as parents to, should, yeah. to become a doctor yeah, and yeah. and they thought i could do it and they were rah rah my parents have always been very supportive so <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm with you with science. Uh, fifth period <laughs> biology was right after lunch in high school. Back in the day, we used overhead projectors. So the teacher turns the light out and you're like, mm. you're like four of us sleeping in the back. Yeah. I hated that class. So I'm with you on that. So, uh, I always like to look at, uh, distinguished alums of universities and okay. we're hoping that this hour for the show will elevate your status within University of Utah alums. We'll see. A <laughs> couple of interesting names. Uh, Stephen Covey, the uh -huh. author. Uh, seven Habits of Highly of success, successful, successful people. people. Yeah, wonderful. Did not know that. John Warnock. You know that name? 
oh. Adobe. Oh, really? He started Adobe, yeah. <laughs> and Grant, at the University of Utah, there's tons of of athletes that went there. Alex Smith, the quarterback. Yeah. Uh, Star Le- Le- Tulale, I think he used to play for the Panthers here. So there's a healthy number of athletes that came out of Utah, which I kind of had an ideal idea. One of my favorites, Nolan Bushnell. Anybody? He started Atari. Oh, I but, saw a documentary about yeah, him. Yeah, but Bushnell. his, no, his yeah. claim to fame, people, and every parent will know this, Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> now that part I didn't know. I knew about the Atari. Yeah. But Chuck E. Cheese is like, oh, gosh, I remember those days. So he was the founder of yeah, Chuck E. Cheese. Yep. I like that a lot. Huh. Uh, and for those of us who have been to Chuck E. Cheese, like, oh, man, you just hope not to. Kids, you, there are certain stages you want your kids to get out of. Thankfully, we missed the Barney days, uh, which I'm glad. We went straight to the Power Rangers, which were awesome, still wonderful. But there's some things like, God, I hope I never have to go to one of these parties at this place again. Yeah. It's, so I hope they make a lot of money because that's just, oh, that was tough. So, uh, Jay Willard Marriott, mm-hmm. who knew that? I did not know he went to University of Utah and started there. Yeah, the Marriott yeah. family is I'm sure they got names well. everywhere, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's a name I knew from when we lived in Houston, Robert Jarvik, the artificial heart, the Jarvik 7 artificial heart, one of the first ones I believe uh-huh. out there. So, yeah. So I think. Now, there are like 30 names, so I just sensed you were like 35th or 36th on the list. Just the website ran out of <laughs> spaces for pictures. But uh, I'm hoping this will raise. Ho- 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 okay. Hopefully, we'll get right. there. Give me a good, I've got your work history, and we're going to we're gonna get to some of that eventually one day. Um, I always bring a bunch of notes, and sometimes we get to it, sometimes we don't. That's fine. But there, you got to have a good high school job story. Hmm. That either lasted for an hour or was, yeah, this isn't going to work or oh, me I've, and my buddies. I've got a few yeah, if we're me, going to go down that We road. are. Yeah, I make everybody tell the story. My so just first with job, your I lasted a whole day. <laughs> so we had moved to a, a new city um, that I wasn't familiar with. And this was uh, before GPS was super prevalent. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And it was pizza delivery. Oh, no. So, and the poor people that they had given me the pizzas to deliver to, you know, I was calling them, trying to figure out the neighborhood. Left like, on really what? Confused. There's no left right here. Yeah, and I got lost and stressed oh, out. And man. so at the end of the night, I came back in, and the manager said, this isn't going to work out for <laughs> you, is it? I was like, no. <laughs> and so... Uh, went from there to Wendy's and I was actually at Wendy's okay. all throughout right. my high school career. Loved it. Loved what, working at Wendy's. What was the minimum wage back then? You remember? And we're not talking that long ago, but five fifteen. Oh, so man, I started, I started at five twenty five at Wendy's and was at seven twenty five by the time I left. Really? There. Yeah. Dang. That was so good I, money I moved then. up the minimum wage ranks, but I, I, I thrived there. See, my high school job was at, uh, there's place called, it was place, I think there's one left called Roy Rogers. Uh-huh. Anyways, barbecue. Yeah, they're still around. And back in the day, so this would have been 77, I think, 78. The word back then was there, he was getting $300 a month from every, from all 350 stores. So that's good money back then. Really good barbecue. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I was there when we finally got to $3 and five cents an hour. Mm-hmm. That was big time. We were just, you know, you work six hours, like, dang, I just made 18 bucks. And, you uh-huh. know, gas was, you know, 35 cents, I think a gallon back then, but I digress on stories like that. So, so one day delivering pizzas with no GPS, that does make it difficult. Yeah. Cause they can write down all the directions you want, make a left here and they forget about that road. Oh, it's the Oh, I, did I say the second left? I meant the first left. And, yeah, uh, it, it was awful. I, I still remember how stressed out I was that night and just how beside myself, you know. Did you first get any job, of them? I thought I was a failure. Yeah. I did you get any of them delivered? Got two out of the three. <laughs> <laughs> so, was this uh, a local pizza place? Uh, it was, uh, it a, was chain. a chain of uh, five buck pizza. Hmm. I, I don't know if Must it's made it out right. east, but okay. there's there's a decent amount of them nice. in the west. So. Yeah, I, I, kudos to delivery people. I wouldn't want to be the guy because yeah. last thing you want to do is walk up with four pizzas and he orders 30, 30 
you know, 29, whatever, they throw you a dollar or $2 tip. It's like, dude, come on. Yeah. You know, a little help here. So, but I didn't, all the grief you get and stuff like that. So more power to you, but one day, okay. See, those are the stories we like. We uh-huh. like those a lot. What I want to hear more about with you is you were a missionary for the church of Latter-day Saints. Yes. So explain, because we all think we know who the Mormons are, who the Latter-day Saints are, and we Catholics, everybody's got the Baptists have this and the Catholics have this. So who or what are the Latter-day Saints? What's the difference between that and Mormons? Is there? So Mormons is actually a nickname of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So it actually is the same faith. Uh, So unlike uh, other mainstream Christians, because we are Christians, uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We believe that the church that Christ built on the earth was it's been restored. And so instead of continuing on through Catholics, the Protestants, we believe it was restored. And we believe in something called the plan of salvation or the plan of happiness, which details where we come from, why we're here, and where we're going, and our role in that, and our Savior Jesus Christ on that. I know that B I and I only know this through sports, or I first heard about this in sports with BYU athletes. They could not go pro right out of college because they had to do a two year mission mm-hmm. trip. Do is that all of you the state of Utah with all the universities? Uh, certainly was at Utah. You chose to do that, or did you have to do that as part of your uh, curriculum? So you don't have to serve a mission. Okay, um, but we're highly encouraged to. Mm-hmm. Uh, we believe in and serving others and serving missions. And so, yeah, I spent two years in Canada um, serving a mission and teaching the gospel and and helping those that aren't quite as fortunate as I was growing up. Do you get a say-so in where you'd like to go? You can suggest places where Mm -hmm. you might feel you're a better fit or where you might do better, but no, I did not pick to go to Canada. Some of my friends that ended up in Peru or Italy did not choose to go there. Okay. So mm-hmm. can end up anywhere in the world. Do you, and how many people, so let's talk logistics for a second. So this is after you graduate mm-hmm. and they say, Mitchell, you're, is it two years? Yes. Two years. Okay. So we're sending you to Canada for two years. Do they tell you exactly what you're going to do or how does that evolve? Yeah, so actually great sales training because, yes, uh, they <laughs> they ship you off to what's called a, a missionary training center in which they uh, teach you what to say, um, how to teach the, the different lessons, uh, make sure you know your Bible, your Book of Mormon quite well, uh, and, and, yeah, you get shipped off. But, yeah, you, there's quite a bit of training and quite a bit of work. They don't just throw you to the wolves. It's actually very, very well organized from, uh, you know, hierarchy, having district leaders, zone leaders, a mission president, and reporting in. You wake up at a certain time each day. It's Oh, really? <laughs> it's okay. like gospel military. Almost. A little bit of military, so, yeah. right? Was uh, the tra- how long discipline. was the training? Uh, the training itself was only three weeks, but you spent two hours each morning studying. Okay. Um, right. So it's a lot of it's ongoing. And your as training well. center was in Canada? My training center was actually in Utah. Um, okay. All right. But there are training centers all over. Mine okay. just happened to be one of the biggest ones, which was in Utah yeah. itself. And then so. how many of you in that group went to Canada? Uh, that time, there's there's many different missions in Canada, so it'd be really hard to say. Uh-huh. Hundreds. Did some friends of yours, I mean, did you go with some friends? or No. Okay, doesn't yeah, work that I, way, I was... Right? Uh, <laughs> When I got up there, I, I actually ran into some people I knew from the past. But okay. No, it was, mm-hmm. it was among strangers. Did they pair you off going to knock yes. on doors? Okay. Which, you, you always have a mission companion. Okay. With you. Which that makes so, sense for a number of reasons. One is safety, I'm sure. Yeah. There's there's the the reasons it's it's better to go two by two. Mm-hmm. It's it's more effective, but yep. there's also liability. Yep. <laughs> like oh, yeah. you're gonna. You know, no, meet you. some crazy people. And we did meet some oh, crazy people. yeah, the book um, you guys could write with no names involved. Yeah. Because you get you get a hundred different reactions when that front door opens, don't you? Yeah. And, you know, some, some areas, you know, is Calgary, Canada for a lot of it. Some of the areas are fine, but also spent a lot of time on Native American reserves. Um, 
And that's that's hard. You know, the life oh, those poor yeah. people that's all another world right? have. And yeah. it's it's a third world country when you go on. I'm sure not all reserves are like this, but a lot of the ones I've seen, I mean, these these poor people were just shipped off to land and said, Hey, good mm-hmm. luck, here's some money. Um, you know, you don't have any other structure, but hey, you guys will turn out just fine. Mm-hmm. So a lot of addicts, uh, a lot of violence yeah. and and so those those were a uh, little scarier situations being in, on those reserves. In general, were people receptive? Yeah, um, it, as long as you approach people with um, love and mm-hmm. respect, yep. people are usually going to react well to you, even if they don't agree with you. And I agree with that. And I told this story. We're talking about sales, door to door sales, and this happened about a month ago. There was a guy that knocked on my front door. And so I walked and opened the door and he had stepped back to the first step off the porch. And our, we had a wonderful conversation because mm-hmm. he respected that boundary there instead of just looking, you know, when I opened the door, his face is right there. I am more than happy. So going back to your point, I'm more than happy to have a conversation. If you're right there, cause I don't know you, you could be yeah. anybody. So tell me why you're here again on a Saturday at two o'clock. I kind of know what you're doing but I'm happy to talk with you, but he handled it. And we, we chatted for a little bit. I was not a potential client for them, but I had no problem with that. So back to your point, it's a lot of it is, is the approach, isn't it? Yeah. So you've definitely experienced that. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a difference between showing up on somebody's doorstep and saying, Hey, you're going to go to hell (laughs) Uh, or, or to say, Hey, let me share with something with you. That's made a big difference in Mm -hmm. my life. It's brought me a lot of happiness. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a huge difference in how you approach and how you serve people and not to, not to underscore the value and relevance of what you do for the, in these mission trips, but, and that's some seriously good sales training, isn't it? Yes. I actually remember, um, sitting down with uh, the CEO of the, the company I worked with when I got started in merchant services. And he, the, the current director of sales at the time, I was just a field trainer. And this, this guy probably had about 20 years on me, you know, been in sales most of his life. The CEO points at him and he's like, who do you think has knocked the more, more doors out of the two of you? And of course the sales guy goes, oh yeah, yeah, me. And the CEO points at him. He's like, no, he is knocked way more doors than you have. Oh yeah. He he went at it for two years day in and day out, mm-hmm. sun up to sundown. And and yeah, it it it's it's pretty hard to be afraid of rejection after you learn how to doing take it no, for don't that you? Long. And, oh, yeah. and and you learn to to respect it. You learned mm-hmm. you learn to find grace in rejection and to learn that it's not the end of the world if somebody says no to you. Yeah. And uh you learn to appreciate and respect people, even if they don't say yes to you. So. And, and a lot of times when we talk to folks in, in the small business world, because somebody says no on Monday, February 10th, doesn't mean no forever. It just means just not right now. Yeah. So just because they say no, it, I, I, I'm of the, the group that that's not necessarily an indictment on you, Mitchell, knocking on the door as to whether you're good at what you do. It just, the timing may not be right yeah no i i agree wholeheartedly yeah. it, it just because it's not so now it how many doors did you guys have numbers you had to hit or numbers of doors you had to knock on we quit laughing uh, <laughs> come on man. this is what this is how my mind works again i'm into the logistics part of this you know some missions do have like numbers of doors ours was more based on the number of people we talk to and what we meet. And, oh, okay. and so it was a means to an end. You knocked okay. on this many people to teach this many people or to, to find service. You talk to these community leaders to see what the area needs. Uh, yeah. And, and so, yeah, it, it is structured in the fact that you have goals and then you want to meet those goals or exceed those goals. So, yeah, a lot of prep work for sales went into oh, yeah. Was there any doubt you were going to do the mission? (sighs) Not really. Uh, You know, it's a scary thought being away, you know, 19 years old and being shipped off Mm. somewhere for two years where you don't know the culture. You, you know, you know, I, I, 
I wanted to be a doctor. So yeah. I, that meant two years from mm-hmm. that. So, but most of growing up, I, I wanted to do it. I, my father had served <laughs> two years in New Zealand. Oh, wow. And okay. came back with a great love for the culture, mm-hmm. um, being able to speak Maori. Um, you know, nice. any Tongan, Samoan he yeah. ever met was, they were instant brothers, instant friends. And <laughs> nice. so I saw that difference it made in his life. And I, I knew I wanted it for my, myself as well. That, that's scary, right? I mean, you're leaving, most people are leaving. Is everybody leaving the country or are most people leaving the United States on these mission trips? Just, just from the fact that there's more people outside the U.S. Yeah. than in. Yeah, but there's there's people that are missionaries in Ohio. There's okay. missionaries right here right. in Raleigh, North Carolina, that might be from, you know, Michigan or, yeah. you know, Louisiana. Okay. But but yeah, mm-hmm. a, a lot end up in South America, Asia, uh, you know, Europe, yeah. all over the world. Yeah. Looking back on this, what impact did those two years have on you as a husband and a father? Ah, uh, that's a really good question. Uh, being <laughs> Funny enough, being around somebody all day, every day, teaches you how to get along with other people really (laughs) fast. And I thought I was easy to get along with before my mission. (laughs) Turns out a lot of my mission companions would probably tell you otherwise. So being able to uh, learn how to get along with people that are different than you and love and respect people Mm -hmm. that are, you know, have their own different desires, goals, ambitions. Uh, was great training for being married because yes. it, it, it teaches you how to, you know, be able to be patient with shortcomings and understand that we have our own shortcomings. It, it put a big old glass mirror in front of you being on a mission. And oh, I saw yeah. all the faults that yeah. I thought I didn't have. So What I like about you with you saying that is the successful people understand their shortcomings. Mm-hmm. The fakers or the posers, like, oh, I shoot, I can do that. Or like, oh, yeah, I can do that too. And I can do payroll. I can do sales. I can cut the, no, you can't. You can't do all of that. Yeah. So I like the fact that it's a good learning trip as well. Yeah, absolutely. Do, was this a paid, where did you get like no. three squares a day wherever it, you live? They, you, you actually uh, come up with a lot of the money yourself. Oh, not, not really? all of it. Okay. The church subsidizes. Okay. Because no kid's going to come up with, you know, enough to, two years of living, to live yeah. two years food and um, oh. housing. So, no, you weren't paid. You're wow. given enough to be able to buy your meals, to to be able to, you know, okay. given a fuel card for gas if you had a vehicle. Oh, okay. Um, well. So, it's it's not like we starved or we were poor. But, yeah, I've, yeah. I eat my fair share of what's called uh, pierogies. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, because that's a very cheap staple. Oh, know? yeah. So it's, I can yeah. eat that inexpensively. It's the uh, missionary version of ramen for college students. <laughs> but, but, yeah. <laughs> Buy this many for 88 cents and I can eat sure. the whole week with this. <laughs> but, but, yeah, no missionary was out there to yeah, okay. um, make money or have a career. It's yeah. you're, you're at, Hopefully you're out there for the right reasons. Did you get a chance to come home, see family during that two years? No. Really? You're separated for two years. You're fully immersed. Wow. Um, you could still talk to your family via letters, okay. phone calls and everything, mm-hmm. but yeah, you're, you're wow. up there. It's, you're more effective when you're immersed, especially if you're speaking a foreign language, yeah. you got to stay immersed in that foreign language to be effective. It would make sense yeah. rather than, uh, you know, hopping back and forth. Mm. So did you yeah. learn hockey? Did you become a hockey fan up there? <laughs> I, I'm not much of an ice skater, unfortunately, but, uh, I, I was pretty mean at floor hockey by okay. the end. I was already a big guy and a football player. There so you go. Yeah, okay. I, I right. could hold my own if, if I was on my two feet and not. Did, did you skates. know what cold was before you moved? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. You thought you did. You know, right? I negative 40, negative 50 oh, is so much geez. different than what people like. Yeah. When it's cold enough that 10 minutes of exposed skin gives you frostbite, yeah. that's what real cold is. They not, didn't make you guys go out on days like that. No. Did they? Okay. When good. it gets cold enough, yeah. you're. You're in but your place. That's a whole other world of weather. Oh, but I, I, I've made sure to experience that. I bundled up and went out and built a snowman in that weather just to <laughs> say I could. So, uh, Looking on your uh, work history here, I saw you were a, a recipient or a member of the President's Gold Club. President's Gold Circle. Circle, sorry, uh-huh. for what? 
So merchant services. Okay. Right. So means I was one of the top performances okay. in that industry. I want to go back to, because we have a little bit of time left. I want to go back to the role that New York life played in your small business thinking. Okay. Most people refuse to acknowledge that they have failed in a business. For those of you who have, please raise your hand. Uh -huh. There's many of us here. It's okay to do that if you learn from that. And it sounded like from the comments you made earlier that you did learn from that. Yes, absolutely. Because uh, a lot of times it's, okay, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. But So what, all, what was your takeaway from that, and how did you apply that to what you're doing now? So there, there was quite a few things I learned uh, from failing with New York Life. Uh, one of which being that it, it is important to, I, I think people, despite a lot of popular beliefs, I think people can still be uh, highly successful even if they don't have a driving passion for it. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the dude that owns the big fertilizer company, do you really think he's, <laughs> he's passionate about fertilizer? Can you really be passionate about fertilizer? Maybe you can. <laughs> but uh, but I, I do, do feel it's important to, to be able to, to stay committed and, and intact. And I, I wasn't overly excited. I saw a way that I thought I could provide a good lifestyle for my family and have a lot of freedom. Um, I, I learned that I had to put a lot more effort into a business than what I originally thought. Mm. I learned that I need to be around the right people. I didn't learn networking while I was with New York Life. That's something I learned. Yep. Uh, B&I was one of my first networking things I joined when I went in the East Coast. I'd never been to a networking meeting before that. It Networking so. is hard, but it, it, help, it speeds up connecting the dots if you understand how to do that. But you're right. Most people who've joined B&I have never networked in their life mm -hmm. and have no idea how to do it. And that's one of the things we find that if we can teach them almost anything, just teach them how to network. Just walk into a room of people. Or the thing they should learn is bring a wingman with you. Yeah. That life's a whole lot better when you, so at least you know there's one person to talk to. Yeah. But you're right, without networking, and ins it's not easy selling insurance. Mm -mm. It's boring. It's hard. Most people don't want it because, oh, I don't need it right now, and they really do, but, man, that Yeah, to be hard. so I have a great amount of people, uh, respect for oh, people yeah. that have become successful in that field um, because it, it would be hard for me to be successful and in, in selling something that's buy this in case, you know, yes. might not uh, ever use this, but buy this just in case. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so a lot of kudos to those professionals and, and a lot of my friends did do very well with it. I just uh, didn't click. I didn't put in the, the right amount of effort, the mm -hmm. right amount of discipline wasn't well enough connected. And so there's a number of things I learned from failing there. Long as you learn it to apply it, right? You you win by that. It's it's also hard on the selling part of that to understand along the way of what you have to put into it, because you guys have. I'm sure you had numbers to hit. You got to make 100 phone calls a day or 75 a day, whatever it was. And man, that can that can beat on you after a while. But what I've learned with successful small business people is you're educating when you're somebody thinks they're being sold to if you're doing your job right you're educating them yeah to make the right decision absolutely and the right decision may not be i'm sure you've looked at people businesses before where you can't improve on the deal they have right absolutely or or perhaps I, there's even been times where they've wanted it and i say and i've had to go um no yeah. this isn't good for you <laughs> like you know after looking at your situation yeah you know talk to so-and-so this this would probably be a better deal for you where so, you're at in yeah. life so. what's the growth goal for 2020 ah uh, good question so, so this is your fifth year we coming up on your fifth year yep what's the what's the goal what's the next target for 2020 so another additional 100 clients okay uh which shouldn't be too hard but i i'm also making sure that they're the right type of clients yeah. uh you know Focus is, a lot more on mid-sized chains and, okay. and and larger companies. And those are long lead cycle, long sales cycles yes. to get to a a regional chain, right? Because you got to talk to 22 different people. Yes. <laughs> so long sales cycle. Yeah. Um, so I, I need to expand the, the sales force as well. Okay. Uh, get, Who all's get with you now? Just how many stuff. people do you have? So I just have uh, five contractors. Okay. So not 
full-time employees, but other people selling. Okay. And then have uh, some admin staff behind the scenes. All right. And then some call center folks here and there. Other than that, yeah. right? Piece of cake. Other than, okay. than that, I'm still right. the number one salesperson. <laughs> you should I'm be, yeah. still <laughs> the, the one that usually needs to make most of the growth yep. happen. What role does Julie play in the business? Because I'm always curious to see what's, what role the spouse has. Sure, later. Okay. Right. <laughs> she she does a kids. good job. Yeah, she got enough um, on her plate. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I can't ever get mad and say, hey, you need to help me more with the business. She's got yeah. enough on her plate. I, I will say she's done a great job uh, with designing things. If you ever see my presentation, okay, you know I put together the information, but she's the one that makes it look good. Uh, okay, so she she has a good eye for detail. It's that artistic side of her, I guess, okay. of making things look good and a lot of my materials. So she has helped quite a bit with that. My wife is my quality control. Whenever I hear from her. You're kidding me, right? Uh, <laughs> Probably should move on from it. <laughs> yeah, so. But that's that's. But good that's too. her role. I, that's all what I ask her balance. to do is like, hey, what do you think about this? She has no role in the business, except I'll you know I'll run things by her. It's like, hey, so conceptually, here's what we're thinking. You know, what do you think about this? And wonderful insight to practicality. But it's it, but it's important to have that support system. There. That's a good partner to have. So if you or anybody you know has a small business, if they're paying way too much money on their credit card transactions, please give Mitchell a call. Promethean.com. Mitchell's number's been on the screen here. It is 703-589-5465, if my old eyes can read that right. So please give him a call, as he's told us uh, earlier. Even if the deal's not good, even if, if you have a better deal than what he can offer you, he'll tell you that. Uh, stay with who you have, but he will keep in touch with you because you never know when things change. So, Mitchell, we appreciate having you on today. Good luck with everything. Uh, more importantly, good luck with four kids. I know that's a handful in the house, so yeah. a lot of mouths to feed. So, Mitchell could use some business. So everybody give him a call. <laughs> four mouths to feed and a wife who's watching the four kids. And we'll see you next week on Triangle B&I. Thanks, Mike. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.